Hi guys, welcome back to my kitchen. I'm Miss Lori and you're at Whippoorwill Holler Homestead. And I'm so glad that you come back to be with me. Or if you're new to my channel, I'm so glad that you're watching. Well, we're still canning. We are still right in the middle of canning season and there's a lot going on. Now, um, a couple days ago, we got together and we made uh, pickled squash and it turned out really good. Mr. Brown really likes it. Um, I hope y'all try it. If you got a bunch of squash that you need to do something with because I think you'll really like it. And uh, I've had a lot of requests for chow chow. Now chow chow, um, it's, it's kind of there on the relish side. Um, it can be, there's so many recipes out there of chow chow. There's some really old recipes that goes back way, way, way many years ago. And there's different ingredients that you can put in your chow chow. When I make chow chow, it's always in the summertime and it's when my different vegetables are coming off. And what I have the most of is what I use in my chow chow. So, and that's what, how the way a lot of people do it. Now there's chow chow that's made with uh, fresh corn. Um, there's chow chow made with just green tomatoes. Um, but my chow chow is gonna have cabbage. It's gonna have bell peppers, onions, and all that good stuff coming out of the garden. And you can even grate up your zucchini and your squash and put in here too. So that's a good way of still getting rid of all that squash that you got going on. But what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to read to y'all the ingredients. Because I just want y'all to kind of uh, get a feel of what's going to be going on in this recipe. And uh, I know it's going to sound like a lot of ingredients, but it's really not. And the hardest part about this is just getting all your vegetables cut up. And that's it. And this is water bath can. It won't be pressure can. So my recipe is going to call for two pounds of chopped green cabbage. And you can even put a little bit of your red cabbage in there if you want to. So what you're going to do is you're going to end up with about 10 cups of chopped cabbage. Um, two large green tomatoes, seeded and diced. A large Vidalia onion. Now just use whatever kind of onion you've got. And really and truly, you can put as many onions in it as you want. If you like a lot of onions, put it in there because this is going to be a relish that you're going to be eating on a lot of stuff. Um, a large green bell pepper. A large red, uh, red bell pepper. Uh, a large yellow bell pepper. Orange bell pepper. Whatever you like, that's what you want to put in it. And what I ended up putting in it is I put about four medium-sized bell peppers in it because I love bell pepper. You're going to need about one and a half tablespoons of cannon salt, one tablespoon of mustard seeds, two teaspoons of celery seed. You're going to need three cups of white distilled vinegar. Now, if you want to, you can use one and a half cups of apple cider vinegar and one and a half cups of your white distilled vinegar if that's the way you want to do it or you can just use three cups of distilled vinegar three cups of sugar a tablespoon of prepared mustard just like your regular mustard that you put on a hot dog and this is optional if you like a little bit of spice to your chow chow put you in two teaspoons of red pepper flakes one teaspoon of turmeric, one teaspoon of allspice, a half a teaspoon of ground ginger, and uh, you can use two cloves of minced garlic, or you can use you uh, a good teaspoon. What I've got here is a good teaspoon of uh, roasted uh, granulated garlic is what I'm using. So that's your ingredients. Once you've got your, uh, all your ingredients chopped up, 
And I'm going to show you here in a little bit how we're going to get started on that. And we'll go through the whole process. So, let's get started on our chow chow. Because this is going to be really good stuff. And it's going to be easy too. Okay, we got everything cut up and in our bowl. And this is a glass bowl. Uh, you don't want to do this in a metal bowl. As you can see, I've got all my bell peppers, all my onions, and my green tomatoes. And it's already really looking pretty. See if you can get up here and see it. Isn't that pretty? It's going to make a pretty relish. Now, I'm going to have to get a bigger bowl because I've got to mix all this cabbage in. That's 10 cups of cabbage, chopped up cabbage. So let me get a bigger bowl to put this in. Okay, we're back. And I've got y'all's favorite bowl that I use. And I'm hoping I can still get it all in there. If I don't, I'll have to go to my big uh, dish pan. I really don't want to have to do that. So, we're going to dump all of this in here. The bell peppers, the onions, and the green tomatoes. And if you wanted to, you could cut you up some jalapenos to put in here, too. So, we got all that in there. Now we're going to put our 10 cups of chopped cabbage. And it's the bowl's barely big enough. I'm just going to kind of mix this up a little bit. I don't know, Mr. Brown, you want me to put some jalapenos in this chow chow? Uh, no. <laughs> no? Okay. He's not feeling like he wants any spicy hot jalapenos in here. But you can do that if you like stuff a little bit spicy. So I'm trying to get all this mixed up. What we're going to do is we're going to put one and a half tablespoons of pickling salt, cannon salt. We're just going to spread it over the top, one and a half tablespoons. Now this is really good because you can get all this, I mean this right here is what takes the most time, is cutting and getting everything chopped up. So i got one and a half tablespoons of pickling salt in here, or cannon salt. And I'm just going to kind of mix it up. Then I'm going to put something over the top, and I'm going to put it in the refrigerator, and I'm going to let it sit overnight. And then tomorrow, we'll make our relish, and we'll can it up. And this is really, really good relish. Now, like I said, you can double this recipe if you want to. But... I would do this size recipe and then I'd try it to make sure you like it 
And if you like it, then you can double it next time. So, that's all there is to that right now. Put something over the top, put it in the fridge, and we'll be back tomorrow to make our chow chow. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to turn on, I've got my Dutch oven here. This is what I'm going to be cooking my chow chow in. And uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my stove on medium high heat. And it's just a dry pot. There's nothing in there. And I'm going to take my celery seed and my mustard seed. And I'm going to pour it right here in my dry pot. And I'm going to toast my seeds here. But I want to keep them moving around as I toast them. I don't want them getting burnt, so I'm just going to keep moving them around. And what that toasting does to your seeds, it just brings all that good fragrance out. It just makes it taste that much better. So keep your seeds moving. And uh, just for about one minute, is all it takes to get that aroma and that fragrance out of your seeds. Okay, it's been one minute and I've got my seeds toasted. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pour my three cups of vinegar in here. turn my stove back on to about medium high heat. I've got a teaspoon of allspice, I've got a teaspoon of turmeric, and I've got a half a teaspoon of ginger. All that's going to go in here. And I've got a good heaping teaspoon of granulated garlic. And then I've got um, a teaspoon of just regular yellow prepared mustard. Just regular mustard like you'd put on a hamburger or hot dog. That's all that is. I'm going to stir that up just a little bit. Now I've got three cups of sugar. And that's all of our ingredients. Now. Like I said, you can put you a little bit of uh, red chili flakes in here if you like it, just a little bit spicy. So I'm going to stir this up good. And uh, I'm going to let it come to a good boil. Then I'm going to turn it down just a little bit. And then I'm going to let it simmer for about 10 minutes. Okay. We've got our vegetables out of the refrigerator. Remember, they sit all night in the fridge with the cannon salt on them. And they're, they're crispy. They still look good. They're holding up good. So what you want to do is drain them good, but don't rinse them. Okay. Our brine has been simmering for 10 minutes now. So what we're going to do is start putting our veggies in there. <coughs> And Mr. Brown tasted of these. Oh, they're good. It smelled so good I couldn't stand it. He just could not it. stay out of it. I had to taste of it, and it's all oh, that paper. Uh, paper. Just let me talk. The pepper flavor in there is really in that cabbage. It's really good. The peppers, the green tomatoes. And it just it smelled so good I couldn't stay out of it. <laughs> the onions. <laughs> couldn't stay out of it. Now, last year, when I made uh, chow chow, I made it out of, I had a bunch of uh, squash, yellow squash, and we grated it up real fine and put bell peppers and onions and just whatever I had, and that's what I made my chow chow out of. So when I tell you, you can make it pretty much out of just what you've got in your garden. I mean, it all works. 
There's just so many different chow chow recipes out there. So, okay, we got all of our veggies in the brine, and I'm just going to kind of mix it up. Get it coated real good. And what we're going to do is I'm going to let this come to a simmer, and then I'm going to let it simmer for probably about 25 minutes. 20 to 25 minutes, and what it's going to do is it's going to wilt down a little bit, and it's going to thicken up a little bit too. And I'm going to have to try to stay out of it. Yeah, because it's really smelling good. Man, it smells good. Okay, our chow chow's been cooking for about 25 minutes, and it's looking really good. It's thickened up. It's cooked down a little bit. So now we can get it in our hot jars. Our hot, jar, our hot jars have been in the hot water bath here staying hot. I'm just going to get a few jars out right now. So we're going to start filling our jars up. Now, if when you're filling your jars up, don't worry if you're not getting enough juice in there yet because you're going to go back and any of the juice that's left in the pot, you're going to go back through there and uh, fill your jars up to about half an inch head space. And I'm not sure for sure yet how many jars I'm going to get, but we'll know when we get done. So I'm going to get my jars filled up. And uh, I'll come back and I'll show you what they look like. Okay, I ended up with four pints. So if you're wanting a canner full, you need to double this recipe, which is done real easy. Um, if you don't have enough coming out of your garden to make a double recipe, just go buy you another head of cabbage, uh, you know, a few more bell peppers or something if you want a canner full. But this right here is a good start. So, and I can't tell you <laughs> how good this smells now. I've been outside and I come <laughs> in and my goodness it smells so good. I'm it ready does. to eat it right now. It does. It smells wonderful. Now. I debubbled these, but I'm just going to show y'all to make sure that you go around the sides of your jars good because you sure don't want your want to siphon out. I got a half an inch head space, pretty much. Some of them may be a little bit more than others. So, now that I got them debubbled, I'm going to get me some vinegar. Got my tea towel, and I'm just going to wipe around the, the top real good and get that sticky off around the edge and I can tell you this is some of the stickiest even though you're using a funnel it just seems to get so sticky but you want to make sure that you get that off so that it seals good now I've had my hot water bath canner I've had it going for a while now it was keeping my jars hot so uh, if I do this again and I probably will I'll double the recipe so that I get a canner full. But if you're just wanting to start out to try it and see if you like it, and I really think you're going to, just do the regular recipe. And the recipe will be in the description box down below. So now we're just going to put our lids on because we've debubbled, we've cleaned everything. Put our lids on, finger tight, I know sometimes it looks like I'm putting them on tighter and finger tight, but my, my old fingers don't get them on, it's not very tight y'all. Okay, I'm going to get them over here in my canner, and when my canner comes back up, another rolling boil after I put my jars in we'll start timing it again for about 15 minutes then we'll turn the heat off and we'll take our jars out